To say that Terminator 2 was a successful sequel would be a massive understatement. When the film was initially released, it was one of the biggest and most successful films ever made. And naturally, as a consequence, it has had an enduring legacy ever since, having a huge influence on other films, but also developing the franchise, leading to comic book, film sequels, and even TV shows. And of course, amidst all this, there have been toys. Kenner was the first to seize on the potential of the property to make a successful toy line. And so, despite being rated R or an 18 in the UK, and much like Aliens, Kenner was able to produce an ambitious line of action figures to support the film when it was released. But this wouldn't be the last of Terminator 2 action figures that we would see. A few years later, McFarlane Toys would pick up the license for their line of movie maniac figures. And a few years after that, NECA would start producing their own 7-inch scale line. And based on the success of these figures, they would ultimately produce their Ultimate T-800. This figure would incorporate elements from each of the various pre-releases and then up the ante by improving the articulation and increasing the amount of accessories. So today, I'm going to take a closer look at the Terminator 2 T-800 Ultimate action figure. Whereas previous releases had clamshell packaging, this came in a fancy deluxe box. It has a gatefold cover, and the cover image is a production still from the film. When you open the cover, you have a production image of the actual toy in action, and a display window to see the figure. Meanwhile, the reverse of the packaging has a little bit of bio about the film, and then some more shots of the figure in action. The first thing to say about this figure when you get him out of the packaging is that he's a very solid, sturdy figure. This is a fantastic sculpt, and it just looks really incredibly highly detailed and very, very presentable. And straight away, this feels like a definitive version of this character. A lot of effort has gone into this figure, and you can see that in the various textures that he has. He has a rubber jacket, for example, but also the paint washes to make it look dirty and lived in, and all those individual bullet holes. And the bandana is a flexible rubber piece which can be manipulated to wherever you want to place it. The paint washes have been applied perfectly so that you do get a sense of different materials going on, so his pants definitely look like they are leather. And the paint apps are applied perfectly so there's no bleed whatsoever. When we look at the fine detailing of the belt there with the belt buckles, there are no smudges or bleed anywhere. And likewise, there are just small little details that are really nuanced that have been picked up, such as the, the belt buckles on the shoes and the zips in the pants, but also on the reverse you can see all the bullet holes in the back of his jacket, but also on the... Bandana, there are those folded straps there which just look really natural and authentic, which is just fantastic attention to detail. The head sculpts are just absolutely fantastic. Now, NECA have had a lot of practice having produced a lot of different Arnold Schwarzenegger figures over the years, but I have to say they have knocked it out of the park and I think they've produced one of the best likenesses I've ever seen of Arnold in toy form. Now, one of the main promises of this deluxe ultimate figure is, of course, the improved articulation. So, he can spin his head the right way around if we want him to, and he can look up and down a really good distance as well, because he has that ball-jointed neck. He's also got the ball-jointed shoulders, which allow his arms to kick up and out. And I will just point out that he does have a rubber jacket, so there's no hindrance there to the articulation whatsoever, which is fantastic. Now, his arms don't go all the way out or all the way up, but it's a pretty good distance to allow maximum posability there. He's got a peg swivel at the elbow there, which allows it to swivel all the way around, and of course it hinges at 90 degrees as well, which is fantastic. He has the same peg swivel in the wrist as well, so of course he can spin it right the way around, and it hinges so he can crane it in or out as well. He's also got a swivel at the waist there, so he can spin from side to side nice and easily too. He has ball-jointed hips, which are very neatly disguised by the sculpt, which is fantastic, so it is, looks pretty seamless, to be honest, and he can kick his legs out a fair distance. He can kick them up as well, and they sort of kick up and out, as is the case with that joint, uh, and they can go back a little bit. Now, just like the elbow, he does have a peg swivel at the knee there, which allows him to spin it right the way around, but also bend it roughly 90 degrees if you want to force it. And he has an ankle pivot as well, so that foot will rock from side to side and it will rock backwards and forwards as well. Not a huge amount, but enough to get some decent posability out of it. Now, the one thing I did want to point out is that the legs are slightly different. On the other leg, on his left leg, you will notice that he has an extra swivel just atop the calf there. This has been recycled from one of the other releases, but it's a shame they didn't apply it to both legs. Also, just thought I'd mention, I do think it's really cool that they gave him the thumbs up on his left hand, which replicates, of course, the signature moment at the end of the film. And prepare yourself, because he does come fully loaded, with a spare head with shades, a battle-damaged head, a pistol, grenade launcher, shotgun, and best of all, his minigun. Honestly, they're throwing the kitchen sink at this one. I don't know what else they could have included in terms of weapons and accessories. This is insane. 
Except if I'm being really, really picky, it would have been nice to maybe have a swap out arm so we could have had the battle damage arm. But really here we're absolutely spoiled for choice for the variety of different looks that we can create using these different accessories. It's absolutely mind blowing and just wonderful because it feels like you've encapsulated every part of the film. But again, if I was going to be nitpicking, I would say that it might have been helpful to have maybe a couple of different hands to swap out so that they could be perfectly molded to hold each of the weapons. Because as it is, there are quite a variety of different handles and triggers and you kind of have to force them in place there. There's not many that feel like they naturally fit into the grip very, very smoothly and easily. It can be done, but it takes a lot of perseverance. Undoubtedly though, the star of the show is the minigun, which is attached via its gun chain to a big heavy bag as well, which he slings over his shoulder. Thankfully, the ammo chain made of rubber is very flexible and very forgiving, so it allows you to play with lots of different poses. And the bag is molded so that it will fit against his body, although sometimes there is a tendency for it to slip off his shoulder, that's something to keep an eye on. But mercifully, he holds it absolutely perfectly in his grip and it looks astonishing. And once again, the level of detail and attention that's gone into this weapon is absolutely phenomenal. And it just looks fantastic with all the paint apps there to give it that lots of grey and black just to make it look really used and really realistic and authentic is just fantastic. And likewise, I just wanted to point out just how magnificent the battle damage head is, just the incredible intricacy of the paint apps here. So you can see different colours of red for the blood and the silver of the endoskeleton just shining through there. Just looks really impressive. And it goes all the way back to the back of the head as well. So you can actually see the grooves, the indentation into the back of the skull, which is just absolutely incredible. And for the sake of a scale comparison, here he is standing next to the endoskeleton. As you can see, he's ever so slightly shorter, but that's because he is bending at the knees slightly. And ultimately, for my money, this has to be the definitive T-800 action figure. And that is high praise indeed, because there have been a lot of very highly detailed, very well sculpted action figures in the past based on this particular look. Uh, but I think this one takes the biscuit. It definitely has the best of all possible worlds. It's got the articulation, it's got the detail, it's got all the extra accessories and those swappable heads. I just can't imagine how anyone could top this. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.